you've probably seen a lot of videos like this before. And by that, I mean videos of the reaction between potassium and water. And if you have the privilege of being a Koch student, your professor has probably demonstrated this reaction for you in class. Now your piece of potassium. We'll just throw it in here from the top. So you can see the flame and fireworks actually popping. But have you ever wondered why dropping a small amount of some random element into water creates such a big explosion? Well, it has something to do with the French. Allow me to explain. When potassium metal is dropped into water, it reacts to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, and also produces a lot of heat. But this reaction is the same for pretty much every alkali metal, that is, elements in the first column of the periodic table, from lithium all the way down to cesium. But if we look at the reaction between sodium and water, it's not nearly as violent as potassium, as my Koch professor demonstrates here. So now that's a little chunk of sodium, we'll do the same trick. Yeah, I see. I hear some popping and some noises. I hear it like making some shh sound. As you can see, other than the popping and some noises, nothing really happened. To explain why, we have to compare the electronic structure of sodium and potassium. Both of these elements are in the first column of the periodic table, meaning that they have one valence electron in their outermost shell. Atoms are stable with a full valence shell. For sodium and potassium to have a full valence shell, they each need to lose one electron. The difference between these two elements is that sodium's valence electron is in the third shell, while potassium's is in the fourth shell. The higher the number of the shell, denoted by n, the higher the energy level of that electron. So, what happens if potassium's valence electron is held less tightly by the nucleus? Or in other words, it exists at a higher energy level? Well, that means that potassium can more easily lose its valence electron, and thus more easily react with water. Meaning that the reaction is both faster and releases more energy, and is therefore more violent. This idea is also reflected in the ionization energy of sodium and potassium. The ionization energy of sodium is 496 kilojoules per mole, meaning it takes 496 kilojoules of energy to ionize one mole of sodium, that is, eject one electron from each sodium atom. Potassium, on the other hand, has an ionization energy of 419 kilojoules per mole substantially lower than that of sodium. So the data shows us that it takes less energy to remove one electron from potassium than from sodium, which actually lines up pretty well with our explanation that potassium's electron is at a higher energy level than sodium's. Interestingly, this trend extends over all of the alkali metals. The alkali metals are, just as a reminder, the elements in the first column of the periodic table, excluding hydrogen. So that's lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. This column is also called the first group of the periodic table. Notice that potassium is one row lower than sodium. In other words, going down a column, ionization energy decreases. The ionization energy of cesium is less than rubidium, which is less than potassium, which is less than sodium, which is less than lithium. What's even cooler is that this trend of ionization energy decreasing down columns or groups is generally true for the whole periodic table. Just one of the many wonders of chemistry. Because ionization energy decreases down the column of alkali metals, the elements become increasingly more reactive, meaning that the reaction of cesium with water would be the most violent. That is, if that was the last element in the group. The last element is actually francium, an element first synthesized in 1939. It was discovered by a French physicist named Marguerite Perret, a student of Marie Curie. Because it's the last element in the group, its valence electron is at the highest energy level, meaning its reaction with water is the most violent. So while potassium's reaction looks something like this, an equivalent amount of francium 
would probably react like this. In other words, Francium really, really hates water. And that probably explains why the French never take showers. But that's not the only crazy thing about Francium. It's also extremely radioactive, with a half-life of about 22 minutes. So it explodes like this. And it's radioactive. Basically, it's a nuke. The first actual nuclear bomb was detonated in 1945. That's six years after Perret discovered Francium. So essentially, the French had access to the nuke before the nuke, and yet they still managed to get conquered by an art school reject.